America is that it was destroyed last September by Israeli jets. Was it a nuclear reactor being built by North Korean engineers? Was it months, perhaps even weeks away from going into production? Could it have, uh, could it have made materials for a nuclear weapon? And why did the Bush administration wait seven months to release corroborating evidence to help us sift through all of this? The ramifications very, very serious. We're joined by two guests. Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein is a key member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. She's joining us from San Francisco. And with me here in Washington, Republican Congressman Peter Hookstra of Michigan. He's the highest ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, thanks to both of you very much for coming in. And Senator Feinstein, let me start with you. Uh, you believe this uh, evidence that the administration released this past week is absolutely uh, positively the, uh, the accurate uh, bottom line as far as North Korea cooperating with Syria and developing clandestinely a nuclear reactor? Well, well, the Senate, <clears throat> excuse me, the Senate Intelligence Committee did have a classified briefing. And I can say this, uh, based on the analysis of the people that were there, namely Admiral McConnell, General Hayden, and National Security Advisor, um, the National Security Advisor, the facility was not configured for civilian use. Um, they had a number of, uh, I think, documenting points to make the case that this was, in fact, a nuclear weapons facility. Now, having said that, I was surprised that they hadn't given the information to the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency. And I was also surprised by the timing of it, because there have been some reports that Israel and Syria were looking at a settlement, quite possibly. And this could very well disrupt that settlement. But, but so you believe, I, but candidly, you be, but you're, based on what you know, <laughs> Senator Feinstein, you believe that this was a nuclear reactor that North Korea was constructing in Syria. Look, none of us on the committee are nuclear experts. We take the views of nuclear experts. According to those experts, the answer is yes, this was a nuclear facility. I would be very surprised if it turned out to be anything other than that. Because, Congressman Hoekstra, you know there's a credibility problem that the Bush administration has, given the evidence that Colin Powell, the then Secretary of State, presented to the wow. United Nations Security Council on weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, which proved to be at least some of that evidence bogus. Are you 100 percent convinced, as the ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee, that this evidence is solid? Yeah, I am. I believe that the evidence that was presented, and we had the same group of briefers coming to the House Intelligence uh, Committee, this is compelling information. But I think this points out the problem that we have. You know, we had two and a half hours of briefings on Thursday morning. This is the reason why the administration should have briefed us, the, at least the Intelligence Committee, seven months ago. Because there's a lot of other questions that are out there. Questions about how close was this to being operational? Who funded this for Syria? How close was the North Korean-Syrian cooperation uh, in this? And where else might North Korea have been involved in proliferation? Do you have answers to any of those questions? Not at this point. And that's why we should have got, if we would have gotten this information seven months ago to the full intelligence committee, we could have spent the last seven months going through and peeling back the onion and having a lot more information than what we have at this point. We're now going to have to start, you know, at, with the information we got on Thursday and now start moving forward. We should have been doing this months ago. Senator Feinstein, uh, the uh, Syrian ambassador to the United States, Imad Mustafa, spoke with me uh, after the U.S. released this evidence, and he says this is all a lie, it's not true. I'll play a little clip of what he said. If they will dare to present this evidence to the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Commission, it will be a mockery on, uh, for, for the U.S. delegation what? because it's just photographs of a vacant building. This will be an, a, a major embarrassment to the U.S. administration for the second time. But prior to that, they lied about the Iraqi WMDs and they think they can do it again. All right, what do you think of that very strong uh, reaction from the Syrian government? Well, in the first place, there's more than just evidence of a vacant building. Uh, and perhaps the ambassador, if he saw that, wouldn't have made that statement. Uh, however, I do agree it should have, with uh, Mr. Huxra, I think it should have gone immediately to the IAEA. That's why the IAEA is there. 
And by not sharing information immediately, what we do is destroy their verification potential as an independent outside agency. So well, I when think you that's ask a the question, When you ask the question, because the administration uh, suggests this facility was under construction since 2001. When you ask, why didn't you go to the International Atomic Energy Agency with the evidence, what do they say, Senator? I haven't asked them. I don't know, but that's a good point. I think I'll put in a call to Mr. Alberadai and ask that question. Did you, did you ask I that think question, I, Congressman? I, well, you know that way back in October, October 20, I had an editorial in the Wall Street Journal uh, making a public case as to why the administration should at least bring in the intelligence committees because I thought it was a huge mistake for exactly the reasons that you're implying that the administration has a credibility problem and if they're going to deal with this credibility problem the way to deal with it is to be more open especially with members of Congress so that we can get this information not to hold that information back and hold it close to your vest and not share it with anybody. Are you saying Senator Feinstein that over these uh, seven months since the Israelis knocked out that facility, whatever it was, uh, they, the administration didn't share any of this evidence with you as a, a member of the Intelligence Committee? Yeah, that's essentially correct. And the point is, then when they do, it makes us very suspicious as to why are they doing it right now. Well, why are when they doing, trying it? To why put are together... doing it? Why are they well, doing it now, Senator? I think they're sending some kind of a message, which candidly I don't understand, to North Korea. And I think they're also, um, one way or another, influencing an agreement with Syria and Israel. And to me, the timing is very suspect. Now, I think Mr. Huxra is absolutely correct. We want to know what kind of involvement North Korea has had uh, with other countries as well. And the fact that this um, nuclear weapons facility seems to be along the lines of the North Korean prototype that there are actual photographs of uh, North Koreans uh, and Syrians in nuclear-related uh, surroundings makes one believe that there's been an ongoing relationship for some time. If this had been dealt with in an open way at the time, I think all these things could have been nailed down. The North Korean talks perhaps could have been more successful, and Syria might have been put in a place uh, where uh, an accommodation with Israel is more appropriate. Right now, um, right. it can well blow up the situation, me, and I think that's too bad. Congressman, let me read to you from uh, Friday's editorial in the New York Times on this question of why now. It is no secret that Republican hardliners are outraged over a State Department negotiated deal intended to eventually shut down North Korea's nuclear weapons program. They are desperate to stop it. Thursday's presentation to certain congressional committees will also make it harder to win approval for aid to dismantle North Korean nuclear facilities, an essential part of the agreement. Is that, uh, would you say that's accurate? I think that's accurate. I think w the information was released on Thursday. I think the administration believes it will help them get to a deal with North Korea. I think that many of us believe that the timing of it, what information they released, what information they did not release, and who they released it to is going to make it more difficult for them to reach an agreement that will be supported by Congress and supported by the American people. The administration has handled this very badly. Do you have any evidence that North Korea is involved in proliferation along these alleged lines with Syria, with any other country right now? Well, I think this is the question. I mean, a very small group of us knew about this a year ago. What we really want to delve into was if they have if they're proliferating with North Korea who else or if North Korea is proliferating with Syria who else might they be dealing well, with? Well, have you been presented any evidence of dealing with anyone else? We haven't there. been able to dig down into that issue, and that's what we should have been doing over the last seven or eight months. Do you have any evidence, uh, Senator Feinstein, that North Korea is proliferating nuclear materials or, or know-how with other countries right now? No, I, I do not, but I'm not the chairman of the committee. Um, Mr. Huxra is the ranking, and sometimes this just goes to the, uh, the leadership of the committee, but I have none. So right. I think if I could just add yeah. to that, Wolf, what happened in North Korea shows how far a proliferation program can move in its development before it is actually discovered through intelligence. So this, this facility may have been just a few months away from going operational. 
and we never knew about it. And I'm going to take a break, but I want to yeah. wrap this part up with a qu quick question to both of you. Did the Israelis do the right thing by knocking out this facility last September, Congressman? I think that this was a huge uh, problem in the Middle East, a destabilizing effort. I believe the Israelis did the right thing by taking out this facility. Senator Feinstein, what do you think? I think so, too. Uh, I think Israel just can't countenance a nuclear facility from a hostile nation uh, that's their neighbor. I, I think it's just that simple. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to continue this conversation. A lot more to discuss. We'll also turn to some other topics, including former President Jimmy Carter's controversial meetings with Hamas. And later, we'll take a look at uh, the next battleground.